Greetings everyone, DFG here. Hey guys, I uh, just want to take a few minutes of your time, Gideon Slide of course. Um, I want to take just a uh, couple of minutes of your time and share my thoughts around uh, a question that's resonating uh, throughout, you know, um, the um, black community. As, of course, you know, when I say black, I'm talking about uh, aboriginal people, you know, copper color people uh, here in um, America, which was once called Turtle Island. Um, and the question that, that that's, that's going around right now is whether or not, you know, uh, your vote matters or should you vote? And um, I was listening to uh, Prince, um, the, uh, you know, and talking about, you know, uh, I want to I I say Prince Nelson. I think that's his Prince name. Of course, we know Prince passed away a couple of years ago. Um, and him and uh, Tavis Smiley uh, were talking on Tavis Smiley's show about uh, whether or not uh, he voted. And Prince uh, made the comment that he does not vote uh, in reference to whether or not he voted for uh at that time, you know, the black president, um, uh, so-called black president, Barack Obama. And Prince said, no, he didn't vote. He didn't have a horse in that race. And, you know, Ta Tavis tried to, to prod him a little bit, try to get more information. But the long and the short of it, uh, for his religious beliefs, Prince uh, felt like, you know, he didn't have a horse in that race. And I think he kind of used his religion to hide behind uh, the fact that he just uh, felt that uh, voting for the presidency of the United States at the end of the day uh, was just a waste of time. And um, my feelings about the voting process uh, is this. Uh, should you vote? Should you vote? Now, this is for anyone, the general public, if you're listening, uh, but in particular to Aboriginal, copper color people, uh, should you vote? My answer is yes and no. Okay? And in and I know that sounds like a contradicting, contra, contradiction in terms, but I'll exp let me explain. When it comes down to the office of president of the United States, for an example, um, the president of the United States, although we are told that uh, we as a collective vote, uh, I'm talking about the citizenry of the United States, vote for the president of the United States, uh, and we the ones who decide, obviously that's not true. And you guys know that if you remember uh, when Hillary and, and Trump were running, Hillary got more than 2,000, 2 million, I'm sorry, more votes than Trump received. Yet Trump became president of the United States. And of course, they said it because of the Electoral College and whatever. But I, there's an interview with, president, with current President Trump way back in an interview with Oprah Winfrey. I would say this interview is probably in the mid 80s. And they're talking about him becoming president of the United States. So for the most part, your presidents are selected, not elected. I guarantee you that, okay? And you can research it, follow up on it. But that's, I guess I shouldn't guarantee you. That's just my strong opinion. And if you think about it, you know, that is one of the most powerful positions in the world. You can't have somebody in that position that you can't control. And I know it appears that Donald Trump is out of control and all the things that are going on with him. But let me tell you something. Donald Trump is not out of control. Donald Trump is doing exactly what the people who selected him, not elected him, selected him, wants him to do, and nothing less. And if Donald Trump was to ever try to get outside of, you know, the controls, if he tried to be independent and uh, pretty much resisted or rebelled against, you know, those who selected him, Donald Trump uh, would be either impeached or something even worse. And I'll just say this. Remember what happened to John Kennedy, how his presidency ended. Um, and I'll let you fill in the rest. I don't have to say the rest. I thank you. If you, you know, you, if you know history, you know what I'm talking about. So that's the no in it. When it comes down to, you know, national office, I, I, I personally, I wouldn't waste my time. But this is when I will would vote. And this is what I would encourage, you know, you copper color people when you should be voting. You should be voting on <clears throat> in local elections, and also if the national election has measures inside of there. And I'll give an example. Just recently, just recently here in Massachusetts, uh, they had three measures that they were voting on. And so because of those measures interest me, I voted. You follow me? I didn't waste my time getting into the broader aspects of it, but I did vote on those measures. And let me tell you what was inside of those measures. And this is why you should vote. Measure number one here in Massachusetts was whether or not, you know, 
each person should have one nurse assigned to them, you know, when they're in the hospital versus uh, one nurse having multiple patients. And, you know, a good uh, friend of mine, one of my Gideon Fight brothers, um, shared a story with us around the importance of, you know, that measure. And, you know, the measure was, should they have one patient or should they continue to, to, to assist as many patients as they can? And, the, and the, um, the story that was shared with us, you know, by, by my dear brother was that he had a cousin uh, that was uh, in the hospital. And I think he was having, um, uh, uh, I think his appendix removed. I think that's what it was. And uh, they had it, I guess they had to put him under uh, to, 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 um, to come back to service him or to do the surgery. And in the process, like, you know, the nurse left to go see about another patient. He woke up and when he woke up, he, you know, panicked because he didn't know what was going on and pulled off, you know, the uh, pulled the tools and anything out and ended up dying because of it. But had he had one nurse servicing him and watching of him and, you know, keeping our eyes on him, he would be alive today. He goes in for a minor surgery and ends up dead. The second measure was around whether or not uh, po uh, political parties or political candidates should be able to take uh, money from uh, political PACs or organizations, you know, uh, super PACs who would finance their, their campaigns. And, and that was whether or not that should be controlled or limited or, or eliminated altogether, which is important because at the end of the day, you know, even though it's happening, you don't want your, 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 your senators, your Congress people being bought off because when people put money on those candidates, they expect something back uh, for their money. There's no such thing as something for nothing. If somebody gives you something, I'm talking about when you're talking about large amounts of money, I can assure you they expect something back in return. And then the third measure, and I would tell you of uh, all three measures, measure one was very important to me, one nurse to one patient. And then measure three, this third measure, was what you know as the bathroom bill. And I went through and I read the measure. And the measure talked about, you know, uh, gay individuals, lesbians, trans, gay individuals. I'll just use the term gay, but it's covering lesbians, gays, queers, transsexuals, um, and bisexuals, I think is the other one. And the measure was whether or not uh, they should have access and or could you discriminate against them or limit their access. I guess by limiting their access, uh, it would be considered discriminating against them. But inside of this, this, this particular measure, it also stated that men or women, but men could go into a woman's locker room anytime he wanted if he was if he fit the, you know, one of those uh, criterias, he can go in a woman's locker room, just like he can go into a man's locker room, and also uh, he could go into the bathroom, you know, if it's a female only bathroom. And you know, my feelings about that is absolutely not. And because, and I'll be honest with you, if measure three and one wasn't on, I probably would have just went on about my business. But I did go, and I did vote, and I voted based off of those those measures. And, 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 you know, and so in instance like that, if you have a conviction or if you know something or better when it comes down to local decisions that could affect you or your children, then you want to be, you know, first of all, you want to have knowledge of that. You want to go and read and find out, you know, what is being voted on and make sure that, that, um, any propositions that are going to affect, you know, your local community or, or the community as a whole, as it relates to, you know, uh, things that are important to you, value your value systems, then you want to go out and you want to vote. And as it relates to uh, measure three here, you know, again, at the end of the day, as a heterosexual male, let me be clear here, as a heterosexual male, you know, I believe that I have every single right to protect anything that protects, that pertains to heterosexual male. And I feel like my right as a heterosexual male is no less than what uh, a homosexual male's right would be. And as, as I have to respect laws protecting his rights, then, you know, I want him to be protecting and respecting laws, you know, that protects my rights. I don't think I have to give up my rights as a heterosexual male to accommodate a homosexual male. You follow me? And I'm not asking a homosexual male to give up any right of his. You follow me? You know, that, you know, that, um, that he's entitled to because of what I want from him. So, you know, he has his rights. I have my rights. 
Um, I don't have any kind of animosity towards, you know, you know, him or someone with the lifestyle, but I do have a large and strong, clear, uncompromising conviction as it relates to, you know, um, genders having access in places where um, personal privacy can be uh, violated. And I think that for me to be able to walk into a, a, a woman's locker room when women are in there changing and going doing whatever they do in a woman's locker room uh, at any time I want to, um, I, I just I don't think it's right. I think it's wrong. I don't think I should have the right to go walking if you're a female, your locker room or if you're in the restroom. I should have the right to just go in the restroom, you know, to, you know, because I, you know, because, you know, I want to go in there and, and, and pee. I mean, I, if, whether I'm gay male or not, you know, I, I, unless something happens down there, you know, I, I'm sure I'm going to stand up and pee. And so the urinals in the male res, restrooms, are, you know, uh, are fully capable of accommodating that. And so, but, the, you know, so I digress. I, I know I got into something uh, else and, you know. It is what it is. No apologies. It's just how I feel about that. All right. But in terms of the voting and when should you vote, you know, I will tell you again, you need to make sure that you know what are the local measures that are going on inside of your communities. Uh, when it comes down, you want to be voting on that. You also want to get involved in like council men, council women. Uh, you want to be involved in that. Your mayor, you want to be involved in that. You know, uh, the governorship, you know, uh, and then, you know, Maybe Congresswoman and, and even even state and, and, and national Senate races uh, to some degree. But the higher they go, the least effective you're going to be, because at that point, money is buying those 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 they uh, um, buying those elections. They're, those people are paid, paid and bought for. How you say? Yeah. Bought and paid for. So but so the answer again, yes and no. Uh, if it come down to, like I said, things like the president of the United States, I mean, if you want to vote for it, go vote for it. Uh, but at the end of the day, as you already know, if they're going to say, hey, it's up to the Electoral College, then I don't even know why they would even ask for your vote. Uh, and then, uh, but when it comes down to things that's going to, that, that, you know, local things that matter to you, where your convictions come into play, uh, like here in Massachusetts, again, with measures one, two, and three, then I think that's, that's the time to vote, Okay. So um, that's my thoughts around it. Um, all the rest of it, to be honest with you, I'm too busy and, and I don't have the time for the, all the rhetoric and, you know, the Roland Martins out there who, you know, want to call people, you know, stupid and dumb and irresponsible for telling people not to vote. You know, you know, he tends to his own damn business. He's not the spokesperson of, of, of people of color. He speaks for Roland Martin. And, you know, so individuals like that, to hell with them. And then the other individual on the other side who might be telling you, you know, you you never vote. It's a waste of time. You know, same thing applies to them. At the end of the day, it should be a personal decision, but you should be informed of what you're doing and why you're doing it and make sure that, you know, you're voting where it applies to you. You know what I'm saying? In your community. All right. So I hope that helps. Uh, that's my thoughts around it. So um, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Um, and have a great day. DFG, Gideon's Flight. Uh, love you guys and talk to you later. Bye now.